Welcome back to SNU Game Day. We're in the atmosphere here, and it's, it's great. It's great, Josh. Oh, definitely. This atmosphere is absolutely crazy. As everyone's filling in this house, we have alumni, we have current students. It is crazy. Yes. Absolutely. I got the alumni dinner to my right, you know, the drum lines to my left, game behind us. You couldn't ask for a better atmosphere. It's definitely a jam-packed night. It's great. Now, let's get into uh, this homecoming weekend. So, you want to talk a little bit about that right now? Well, you know, we got to remember that we have the musical tonight at 8 p.m. and tomorrow, Saturday night, at 8 p.m. as well. Arts Festival going on all day tomorrow into the football game at 2 p.m. Josh, let's talk a little bit about this game going on right now. We expected Southern Nazarene to have a commanding lead at half, which they do, 49-30, 19-point lead. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the lack of penetration by the Southwestern Christian Eagles. Well, Southwestern Christian, they're definitely having a tough time getting in the paint. SNU is definitely just putting on that pressure around the perimeter and causing <laughs> A huge factor is it's playing into the height differential. With, with SNU having six girls over, the, over six feet tall, yes. they definitely have a huge presence in the paint. Definitely, and Southwest Christian having one girl over six foot tall. Let's go back to what we talked about with Coach Carter this morning, talking about uh, maybe what what do you think she was saying, Josh, to her players at halftime concerning this big game? I mean, beginning of the season, you got to set the tone. They are one and zero. What do you think Coach Carter is telling her players before the game and right now? Well, going back to this morning, we were actually able to uh, interview Coach Carter. She she may have sound that this since it was a big week, that they're just going to treat this as if it was some you know one of the normal games. It yes. definitely wasn't, it wasn't a big thing. Uh, however, she is definitely hyping them up. Yes. For the game, you know, this is a big atmosphere. They definitely have a lot of intensity. Yes. So. yes. Let's talk a little bit about our X factors for this game. We knew coming in that Logan Martin would be a big time scorer last game. She had 16 points. Uh, we also had Uma Thiem and Abby Mara with 14 and Charmaine Johnson with 10. But uh, let's talk a little bit about what's going on with this game with the Storm. We know, obviously, we talked about Southwestern Christian not being able to get as much penetration. But how impressed are, with, are, are you with the outside the perimeter shooting by the Storm? Well, the outside perimeter definitely comes down to Logan Martin. Logan Martin is having a controlling factor in this, in this SMU Christian Storm offense. Last game, let's go back, let's do a little recap back to when they had this huge blow against number 22 Angel. Having an 81 to 47 deficit. Yes. Great. Just like you said, she has 16 points on her. Exactly. Uh, now going into tonight, she's definitely having the big, the big uh, advantage into tonight's perimeter shooting. Definitely. And we uh, we're not surprised by Logan Martin's success because she was a high scorer in Class 4A in Oklahoma. We knew that was going to happen, you know, oh, and coming into this game. And you know, Southwest Christian, obviously, height difference. They're going to have a little bit. They're one and two on the season. You know, we knew they're not definitely not as good a team as Evangel Missouri is. But we know that uh, they've got big games coming up as well as Southern Nazarene University. Oh. Speaking of big games, let's talk about some of the games that maybe Oklahoma City, I'm sorry, gave away a little bit right there. The Southern Nazarene University has coming up. Oh, SMU, they definitely we, have a big schedule ahead. Coming into uh, Oklahoma City, we're coming out December 3rd. Uh, watch your calendars for that game. You will not want to miss it. They actually go there for the first game. They're going to come back here and challenge them at January 19th at a home game. That is definitely going to be a big game. A little bit about the scoring by the storm. We talked about beyond the perimeter. Let's talk about all around scoring. Uh, started off big three pointer. Big, big three pointer by Uma Thiem to start off the game. Then they got off to a quick 5 0 lead. Uh, how impressed are you with the overall? They're hitting on all cylinders. You know, that's what you got to do to win. Uh, what are you thinking for the second half? What do they got to do to not only keep the lead, but just uh, blast them beyond recognition? Well, they're going into this half with a 49 to 30. They're going, they're, they're definitely making the advantage when they have the shot. Uh, let's go, let's go. Okay, they're definitely getting the ball into Abby Barra. Yes. Six foot one senior going um, definitely hitting shots when they're definitely needed. Yes. And Abby Mara, definitely a force inside, as is Charmita Johnson and Ashley Mantooth. Very, very great players. Uh, on an unrelated note, uh, let's talk a little bit about the diversity among the team. Southern Nazarene University Crimson Storm. We know that uh, we have three players from outside of the United States. So Southern Nazarene University not only recruits in the United States, 
but from all over the world. And uh, there's something you told me about the Southwestern Christian team that is a little interesting. Southwestern is definitely a homegrown university. They have everyone except for one player coming from Oklahoma. Yes. And their one player that's not from around here is from next door, Texas. Yes. So they're definitely a homegrown unit. And with the diversity of SNU, they definitely have a lot of players that that have this different game that Oklahoma probably has not seen. Yes, definitely. Like you said, Umu, she is actually from uh, Senegal. Yes. So I don't know how that will play into it. Well, <laughs> she's a good basketball player. Let's oh, leave it at absolutely. that. Now, Josh, going into the second half, uh, do we try, knowing that we have a lead, a 19-point lead, do we try to keep playing the same players and just get them the more experience? Because we do have three girls that are four-year players on this team. Do we try to get more playing time and try to uh, lengthen this lead and make it even bigger? Or do we try to uh, get some new uh, fresh blood, fresh meat in the game? Well, I don't know. Figuring it's the second game of the season, you know, they're, they're still underway, the game of the season underway. They have these three seniors that have been here for four years. You know, Abby Amara, Logan Martin, and Abel Liam. They're all returning. They know how to gel. They've been playing with Coach Carter for four years now. They know the system inside and out. They're all working together. Exactly. Yes. I, I don't know if they actually need to sub in right now since the season's just been underway. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, and like you said, you know, a lot of experience in this team. We knew coming in that the Southern Nazarene University Crimson Storm women's basketball team was going to be a force to be reckoned with for sure. Not only in their conference, but in the nation as well. Um, let's go ahead and do we have, looking at the schedule, uh, Oklahoma City University, but uh, do we have any other ranked teams maybe that we should look out for? Uh, what's some other big games we got to look forward to? Uh, Oklahoma City University, uh, I know they were a good team last year, as are the men's team. But uh, what are some other you know, ranked teams we got to look out for this year? Well, we have Oklahoma City coming up, as well as Oklahoma Christian. Okay. Now, that's going to be a tough factor coming into this, into this schedule. Uh, going on to uh, USAO, which is a, which is a, big, uh, a big challenge there. Yes, definitely. And uh, sometimes it's a struggle because you got all these people around, and you know, sometimes they don't know not to walk in front of the camera. But that happens, and that is OK. The Crimson Storm are playing a very impressive game. You know what? People walk in front of the camera, that has no difference. That's how the Lady Storm are playing out there. That's no what happens. That's Everyone what happens. Away, they just fail right through and they continue to That's exactly. Uh, speaking of sports, we're going to switch gears for a little bit, talk a little bit about volleyball. We just found out, this just in, the volleyball, Southern Nazarene University Crimson Storm volleyball team has finished their season. They lost in four games to Lubbock Christian, taking out their national title hopes. Let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, we talked this morning about it, but maybe talk about what went down, what happened, um, you know. Well, being ranked uh, number two in the conference, they were going into this with a high seed going into this national tournament. However, they had a big upset. They, they yes. went out in four games to love it, Christian, and uh, it was definitely a heartbreak as, as they had in this season. Yes, it's definitely a heartbreak. It is definitely a heartbreaking loss. Uh, stinks when you're expected to do so much. And they went a very long way, not only breaking the school record for wins in a season, but setting their own record at 29, 30, 20, 29 games. And so, you know, that's they got something to look forward to next year. They only have one senior on the team this year in yeah. Cat Biddy. And so we know that they're going to come back strong and they're going to have a good team next year. And we congratulate them on their record they set and any other records they have set and their great season. Josh. Let's go ahead and preview a little bit men's basketball tonight. Uh, we have pretty much rung out the girls' game right now. Let's talk a little bit about uh, what should we expect. Can the male Eagles, we know the female Eagles are struggling in the storm, but can the male Eagles come in tonight and maybe do a little bit better job? You know what? I, I have no idea. The Southwestern Christian, the, males, the men's team, is actually going to come in here and try to take this game to However, I don't think they stand a chance against this strong Crimson Storm offense. Yes. When you got guys like John West, who is a returning starter, uh, Horse McGloucester, when you got when you have guys like that, you have a winning team. You know, John West is a force. He's a versatile guy, uh, inside, outside. He can shoot. He can take it to the paint. And you got Southwest Christian, who's coming in with a homegrown player in Jordy Harris. Went to Bethany High School, so this game's going to mean a little bit for him. Oh, definitely. You know, it's going to. Yeah, there's no doubt that he's coming into this game, showing Bethany how they do it. 
you know, being a homegrown here in Bethany, in right. the cold, uh, there's no doubt that he's coming in here looking for a win. Right. And let's go over a little bit of the schedule for the Southern Nazarene University men's team. Uh, they're coming off a absolutely heartbreaking overtime loss to uh, University of Central Oklahoma Broncos, who are ranked 11th nationally. Uh, what should we expect tonight? What do you think? We talked to Coach uh, Boach, Boach this morning. What should we expect from tonight? Do you see, what fireworks do you see being set tonight? Yeah, we definitely, when we were talking with uh, Coach Adam Boach, uh, he was very strict, very to the point that he is not, he is not expecting anything but stellar performance. He's definitely expecting a lot out of his guys as we're going into this high yes. intensity atmosphere. And as he should, one note, Adrian Hunter, a senior guard from Flint, Michigan, last game, had three, I'm sorry, three, five three-pointers, could not say it. Five three-pointers, he was five for six from the on the arc in that thriller OT against University of Central Oklahoma. Let's talk a little bit about, I'm going to give too much away on the men's team, but uh, let's talk a little bit about maybe big games they are set up to, to face, big teams they are set up to face. Oh, like always, just like the girls team, the guys team is going to come out gunning for Oklahoma Christian as well as Oklahoma City. Yes. They, these are huge matchups to look for. Coming here and there, you will definitely be. Definitely big some, game. definitely some great in-state rivalries going on. Absolutely. But now, before we we go into uh, our picks for the second half, maybe uh, elaborate more on the girls' game before we go into picks for the men's game. Let's talk a little bit about football tomorrow. We talked, touched on it this morning, but let's continue a little bit more and talk about the football game, uh, how important that game is tomorrow for the Crimson Storm. Oh, definitely. This game is going to be a huge signing factor for the postseason birth for this Crimson Storm yes. football team. Yes, and as Coach said, both teams are ranked, and both teams cannot lose this game if they want to get into the playoffs. It's your classic Alabama-LSU collision. And so Absolutely. we're coming up on second half of the girls' game, so we'll send it to our game time reporters in Travis Vernier, Mel Schellenberger, and Erica Hicks.